Hi! Recently, Angular 17.2 was introduced and it brings a lot of new API that enables deeper integration of signals in our Angular applications. One of these new features is a function called model, which one I'm going to cover in exactly this video. In the end, you will learn why this new model function is not a replacement for the ng model. You will learn how to migrate to this brand new signal-based two-way data binding, and we will have a look how to adjust your unit tests after the migration. My name is Dmitry Mozhensky and my mission is to help people to become advanced Angular developers who develops applications consciously, knowing what they're doing and how things are really working. You can check out my YouTube channel as well as my private video courses to see which topics I covered in the past, but in this video let's focus on the brand new model function and signal-based two-way data binding. It is probably because of naming, but I already saw multiple times that people refer to model function as a replacement for the ng model directive. This is, of course, not true, and uh, those two are kind of related, but still different concepts. So that's why I would like to start this video by clarifying this confusion. So let's take a classical uh, usage of the ng model directive that you all know and use. In fact, this notation is just a shorthand for the much longer form. This is a combination of the ng model attribute directive itself and the directive input output pair that follows a special convention in naming and behavior. The input name here should be like any string, any name, but the output name should contain the corresponding input name plus a suffix change. And the output handler should implement a specific logic where the value emitted by the output has to be directly assigned to the class property that is used as a value for the input I mentioned above. In such a way, we achieve two-way data binding, keeping the directive input property and the corresponding property in the parent class always in sync. So if the value changes in the parent component, it will be propagated as a new value to the directive input. And if the value changes inside the ng model directive, it emits this new value, which is being then assigned to the parent component class property and again propagates this value back to the directive input, finishing in such a way the data synchronization cycle between those two properties. Of course, it works not only with ng model directive. Any directive or component can implement such an input output pair and enable two way data binding. For example, I have a banner where I can toggle the state, showing more or less information there. I can toggle the state from two places uh, via toggle inside the banner and using the button outside the banner component. In both places, I have to react to the banner state changes and adapt my UI accordingly. And in order to keep the uh, states of those two properties always in sync, one of the solutions would be using two-way data binding, which I successfully implemented there. Here you can see the input property called expand and the corresponding output expand change. And this allows me to write the following shorthand syntax in the parent component template right there. So what I want to highlight here is that this new model function is a signal-based alternative for two-way binding. So only for this input output pair and not for the entire engine model okay so i hope this section is clear and we can refactor our current implementation using the model function and uh, enable the single base two-way data binding for our banner component and the migration is extremely simple you just have to remove the output from here then you remove also the input decorator and as a property value you just write model. Here we go. And here you can either provide the initial value or leave it empty. But 
In this case, if you leave it empty, uh, don't forget to define the expected uh, type explicitly because otherwise it will be a known type. So now our property has become a signal uh, or to be more precise, it is a model signal. And because it is a signal to read its value, we have to use parentheses. So uh, let's adjust the component template accordingly, just like that. Additionally, because we removed the expand change event emitter, we have to apply an alternative solution for that. And alternative solution will be calling the set method that is available for this signal model. So just like that. And as you can see, there are no changes required for the consumer of my banner component. They're still the same two-way data binding syntax and even the corresponding expand change event is available for us because when you call the set method of the signal model, it also emits a corresponding Angular output event whose name follows the naming convention I mentioned at the very beginning of this video. So it means that components that utilize the model function under the hood, they stay backwards compatible, which makes your migration safer and faster. What is also unique about the model function is that you can provide a signal as a value for the model input and it will be properly handled by the model function and work the same way as if it was some other data type like string, number or object. So you can go like totally with signals and it should work just fine. Also you can make the model input required likewise with the signal based inputs and for that you just have to type here required and that's it. So now when the initial value is not provided by the consumer of this component or directive, then you will get the compilation error. At this point, those are all features available with uh, model function. So now let's have a look how our unit tests are doing. Whether the migration to the model function will be a breaking change for unit tests or not is heavily depending on the strategy you choose for your tests. Now let's consider the classical way when you create testing components uh, directly. In this case, you might have a couple of places that uh, need to be adjusted. First of all, if you assign values uh, for the inputs directly using the component uh, instance property of the fixture, then your test will be broken because now the property is signal and uh, to set a new value, you would need to utilize the signal API. But here is a pitfall. Uh, if you remember, when you call the set method of the signal model, it will fire also the expand change event that might potentially impact uh, the logic of your tests. Not always, but it might be. So if your goal is just to set up the initial value for the input property, consider using the set input method that comes from the component ref property of the component fixture. And in general, this method is preferred way to set new values for the component inputs inside unit tests. Okay, anyway, Another place where our test breaks is the output, which was removed, if you remember. However, the signal model, it has also method subscribe, which behaves very similarly to the one from the Angular event emitter. But we enter currently a danger zone. So uh, keep in mind that this subscribe method was exposed for the temporarily backwards compatibility and immediately it was like 
deprecated. This is because the Angular team still hasn't decided on the final API for the new outputs, but we can say currently almost certainly that the API will most probably change and this code will be broken again. So as you can see, uh, the test um, is working again, but there is another pitfall that you have to know, if, you, especially if you use uh, required models. Because very often in tests, the initial change detection is performed inside the before each hook. In this case, the initial change detection happens before the model value is set up. And because the model is required, you will get an error. So if your model is required, please ensure that the initial change detection happens after the initial value for the input is set up. Okay, but as I mentioned, there is another strategy to test and war building blocks and it is called test host strategy. Although it usually requires more boilerplate, in most cases, those tests are more stable and tests were written using this strategy. They, especially in this case, they don't need any adjustments at all. And in simple words, the idea behind this test host strategy is that you create a wrapper component for the component you want to test and you configure there some use case or scenario you want to cover with the test. And in my case, it is just a simple two-way data binding, right? So then when I create this host component inside my unit test, uh, the test host also renders uh, my banner component. So I can query the info toggle button and then emulate click on it. And then I can make sure that the show more property in my test host switches to the opposite state from false to true. And this is pretty much everything I want to validate in my test. And if you're a beginner with unit tests and you would like to learn how to write uh, reliable unit tests, please check out my uh, video course called Conscious Angular Testing. In the video description, you will find the link to the course, uh, which is currently available, by the way, with a little discount. All right, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video until the end. I hope it was useful, and if so, please share this video with your colleagues and friends in your social media, because in such a way you help my channel to grow and it inspires me to create more content about Angular. Also, please leave your thoughts in the comment section and please let me know if you could learn something new from this video. Otherwise, I wish you productive week ahead, stay safe and see you in the next video.